The scandal surrounding former star radio host John Gameshi grows as a ninth woman comes forward, and his PR firm drops him as a client. Author and lawyer Riva Seth posted a blog last night containing allegations the former Q radio host sexually assaulted her in 2002. Seth is the second woman to publicly identify herself after Trailer Park Boys actress Lucy Ducouter came forward with allegations of a 2003 assault by the radio star. Also yesterday, a maritime woman came forward anonymously with her story. He threw me against the wall, uh, led me upstairs, told me to get on my knees and proceeded to hit me so hard across the head that I couldn't see straight. She is one of seven anonymous accusers. She alleges she was physically assaulted by Gameshi in 2012. Yesterday, Gameshi's high-profile PR firm Navigator confirmed they had dropped him as a client. CBC has hired a third-party company to investigate the claims against him. These are what we call in the industry historical allegations. The passage of time will not in any way affect the likelihood of conviction. Gameshi offered a short Facebook statement yesterday saying, I want to thank you for your support and assure you that I intend to meet these allegations directly. I don't intend to discuss this matter any further with the media. He asserts that his unorthodox sex life was always safe and consensual. Gameshi is suing the CBC for $55 million. A stylish party with the edgy vibes of Vice last night to celebrate the Emmy Award winning media company's team up with Rogers Communications. It's certainly the coolest announcement. The plan was unveiled yesterday. Vice and Rogers are coming together to create a new Toronto-based production facility and TV network. It will bring Canadian focus to Vice's gritty content aimed at a younger generation. We can bring Canadian content everywhere for the first time in history. Well, that's why we're excited. The $100 million venture will involve a state-of-the-art studio, a 24-hour news channel, and content across the trifecta of mobile, web, and TV. He's at the top of his game, I'm at the top of my game, and we can actually do this, and we can knock it out of the park. Vice will launch in Canada sometime next year. The Stanley Kubrick exhibition is making its Canadian premiere, so now you can enter the iconic filmmaker's world. Kubrick never really explained his movies. He didn't reveal a lot about himself or his process. And this exhibition really does tell us a lot of that information. The exhibit at Toronto's Tiff Bell Lightbox is made up of archives from Kubrick's home and workplace, including original props and costumes from films like The Shining and A Clockwork Orange. I worked with him for 30 years. Uh, was it always a walk in the park? No, it wasn't. But it was wonderful. He had the best conversation I can think of, really. He was his most severest critic. And, uh, well, the result is that all his films remain. Canadian director David Cronenberg is offering a scathing Hollywood portrait in his film, Maps to the Stars. Our special TIFF correspondents Colin and Justin caught up with the star-studded cast on the red carpet. Is that really what Hollywood's like, or do you actually sit at home with a mug of cocoa watching the TV? I do actually do that quite a lot. <laughs> but like, I think that's what made me weirder though. Tell us about your character in this movie. She's somebody who's like really, really needy. She's voracious in her need and she's tyrannical. Maps to the Stars hits theaters today. And you can find us on Twitter at NCity for all your entertainment headlines. Entertainment City presents the hottest night in country music. Carrie Underwood. Ran into a girl in a pretty white dress. Blake Shelton. It's got me feeling all right. Lady Antebellum. Ooh, ooh. Florida Georgia Lodge. Join us live from the red carpet at the CMAs. Entertainment City's coverage of Nashville's biggest night is brought to you by redtag.ca. The Country Music Association Awards, Wednesday, November 5th, only on City.